like this. And welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this Tuesday, June 8th. I'm your host for today's program, Paul Domain. Many of the stories read here can also be found at our website at IndianCountryTV.com. And here are the news stories for the day from the Associated Press and other native news sources. The Seminole tribe, whose former leadership admitted to controversial spending sprees nearly a decade ago, is being accused of violating federal Indian gaming laws for spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on jewelry, cars, travel, and other personal expenses for its members. The National Indian Gaming Commission said during early June that the Hollywood-based tribe, which rakes in hundreds of millions of dollars from its popular Hard Rock Hotel and Casinos near Hollywood and Tampa, Florida, broke the law when it gave six of its members more than their allowable share of gambling profits. The Seminole tribe faces fines of $25,000 for each violation and the potential closing of its gambling enterprises, which also include operations in Coconut Creek and Imokali. The tribe has 30 days to appeal the commission's action. Tribal spokesman Gary Bittner said in a statement, the Seminole tribe is reviewing the notice of violation and is intent on correcting the violations. A Macy, Nebraska man has been given prison time for killing bald eagles and selling feathers from red-tailed hawks. Shane Bertucci was sentenced June 3rd in U.S. District Court to five months in prison and a year of probation. The 27-year-old was also ordered to pay $8,450 in restitution. Bertucci was convicted in February of two counts of killing bald eagles and one of selling the hawk feathers. The U.S. Attorney General's Office says Bertucci admitted killing three bald eagles and five red-tailed hawks on the Omaha and Winnebago reservations and admitted selling hawk feathers without permission from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Court documents say the crimes occurred in 2006. Bertucci was indicted in the year 2009. A protest against the developing Upper Peninsula mining project has reached the Michigan State Capitol. A few dozen environmental activists and members of American Indian tribes gathered in Lansing last week to present petitions to Governor Jennifer Granholm opposing the Kennecott Eagle Minerals Company project. Some also hope to speak at a meeting of the state's Natural Resources Commission. A small group protested recently at the Marquette County site where Kennecott is preparing to drill for nickel and copper. Three protesters have been arrested recently on misdemeanor trespassing charges. Kennecott says calling police was a last resort after opponents refused several requests to vacate the state-owned property the company is preparing to lease. With her drive and determination, Tess Abrahamson Richards also knew she would go to college someday. Leap ahead and on June 13th, Abrahamson Richards will be honored at Seattle's university's undergraduate commencement with the prestigious President's Award for maintaining the highest grade point average throughout her studies. Hers is a story about empowering opportunities, although it isn't without its challenges. Abrahamson Richards, a member of the Spokane tribe, recalls the difficult shift from her Spokane home to university life in Seattle, Washington her freshman year. When she reflects on that, she offers a nugget of advice. Don't be afraid to seek out support in whatever community you need, because it's out there somewhere. Her future? This summer, Abrahamson Richard joins the Teach for America program, which recruits and trains outstanding recent college students from all backgrounds and career interests to teach for two years in urban and rural public schools in lower income communities. And you can get a hold of Tess by contacting Casey Kaur, the Director of Strategic Communications, at 206 931 4783 or email her, and we'll put that email up on the board there so that you can see it later on. The 5th Annual Aboriginal People's Choice Music Awards are gearing up to take place in Winnipeg on November 5th and 6th of this year. Submissions are wanted to uh, by, uh, are wanted by Aboriginal artists from across Canada and North America and Indigenous artists from around the world. The awards are part of the Mana Money to AB Festival and recognize and celebrate the best in Aboriginal music. Winners are chosen by music fans and industry stakeholders through an online voting system. 
All submissions are uploaded online for registered members to browse and consider before voting for their favorite choice. Artists are invited to submit before June 30th of this year. More information and submission forms are available at aboriginalpeopleschoice.com. The 5th Annual Festival takes place in Winnipeg from November 3rd through the 7th. Money to Abi, which means where the Creator sits, honors a sacred site in Manitoba's Whiteshell Provincial Park where Aboriginal people gathered for hundreds of years to share teachings and wisdom. The Peace and Justice Story Conference Healing Wounds Through Story will be held October 14th through October 16th at the Metropolitan State College in Denver, Colorado of this year. This innovative conference is for storytellers and those who work for peace and justice to share story and how to use story to support peace building and working for change. This is a cross fertilization of generations and those working with story to explore how to enrich each other's work through power of story. Uh, they're looking for professional and volunteer storytellers sharing personal and traditional stories and those working for peace and justice in a wide variety of settings and anyone who wants to learn how to use story or gather more stories for read dissemination. If you tell stories and or work for preschool, children and youth, adults and or communities, please consider submitting a proposal. For more information, you can contact Susan Kaplan at 303-871. 8469 or Elizabeth Toomey at 303 758 1482. We're going to put their phone numbers and their emails up there so you've got them. And this conference is a collaboration between the Rocky Mountain Storytellers Conference and Journey Through Heritage, Metropolitan State College of Denver, and is in conjunction with Conflict Revolution Month. And we'll put the URLs for those websites as well up on the board. Lemuel Bahi Yaza. Yazi, a member of the Navajo Code Talkers who confounded the Japanese during World War II by transmitting messages in the Navajo language, has passed away recently. He was 91 years old and is one of a handful of members of the Navajo Code Talkers that uh, is, was still living. Navajo Nation officials said last week that Yazi, who lived in White Cone, Arizona, passed away at his home during late May. Tribal President Joe Shirley Jr. ordered flags on the Navajo Nation to be flown at half-staff through June 6th in honor of Yazi. Yazi joined the Marines in September of 1944. He served with the 4th and 6th Marine Divisions as a radio telephone operator until March 6th, March of 1946. He returned to Northern Arizona and was a machinist, rancher, and ordained minister. Yazi is survived by six children, 26 grandchildren, and 52 great-grandchildren, along with his two brothers and three sisters. And that is the latest roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. We want to thank you all for joining with us again. Come back soon. Miigwech.